Our Father, we love you with all of our heart, all of our lives, every breath in us, with every iota of life that is in us, because you are our Lord. You are our creator, you are our maker, you are our redeemer, you are our life. The life we live is the life you have given to us through Christ Jesus. And we worship you. We exalt you. The scripture says you are the father of all spirits. You are our father. Even though Abraham is ignorant of us, he, he does not know us. Except he sees us from heaven now. You begat us. You have carried us. You, you, you gave back to us by the Holy Ghost and by the word of your power. Every day you bear us. You are never tired. You are never weary. Even sometimes when we are foolish. Your mercy, your faithful love is always there. We appreciate you, Father. We bless you. We honor you. We acknowledge you. We hallow you. We venerate you. Lord, we sanctify you in our heart. We sanctify you in our midst. We bless your mighty holy name. Thank you for the dimensions in which you have shown yourself to us. Thank you for you daily load us with benefit. We bless you for the word. We bless you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the comfort of the scriptures. Thank you for the gathering together of your saints. Thank you for heaven visiting the heart every time Zion is in session. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we are pleased to be in your presence this morning. We would rather be doorkeepers in your house than to dwell in the tent of wickedness. But Lord, you have made us your sons and daughters. You have called us your own. You have put your spirit in us. We bless you, Lord. We are in, in standing before you. We are Christ. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your sustaining power and the strength of heaven in our spirit. We bless you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we have come again at your feet. We ask that you will speak to each and every one of us. We ask the answers of peace and light, illumination, revelations. We come from you this morning and we mantle upon us in the name of Jesus. Lighten our lamps, O oh God. Illuminate all our darkness in the name of Jesus. That we might walk surely. That we might walk boldly in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. I take authority over every effort of Satan and his court this morning. I say you do not have any part or share in this service today. I resist you, I bind you, and I cast you out of here. I say no way to you. This congregation belongs unto the Lord. Zion is in session. So be gone. Unbelief be gone. Doubt be gone. Every pain be gone. Every worry, every anxiety, every offense be gone. In the name of Jesus, that the Holy Ghost will mantle upon our spirit as we open to the Lord. We receive that which God has for us today in the name of Jesus. Thank you as life flows from the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's take our seats wonderfully before the presence of God. You're welcome to church. The Lord bless you mightily in the name of Jesus. I want to appreciate the pastor for this opportunity. I appreciate the church of God in session this morning. One of the costliest things that God has on the heart 
is his body, his church. Jesus is the head of the church. Every single Christian, who every single person who acknowledges Jesus as his or a personal Savior and Lord and is following him, belongs to the body of Christ, and we are God's treasures. We are the apples of his eye. He will never let anything harm us. So, uh, we must design the body of Christ. We must design the church, and we must honor God for her. This morning, we are going to be sharing something that seems very, very obvious, but it's just that when you have something, sometimes because you've got that thing, no matter how precious it is, if you don't sit down and reflect on it, it may not mean so much to you. But this morning, God wants to remind us and quicken our hearts towards this particular treasure that those of us in church have had this morning, that I believe God has somebody somewhere also that he want this message to get across to. And I believe, I trust the law, that God is going to be touching our heart this morning in the name of Jesus. So we are going to consider why should you be in church? Why should you be in church? The Christian faith will serve only one God, the supreme being, the creator and the maker of the heart, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's who we serve. That's who we love. And not because we firstly love him, but because he firstly loved us. That's the miracle about God. He loved us. And he came to demonstrate the love to us by coming in the human flesh as Jesus Christ the Savior. And he has commanded that whoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. You know, God is a God who is a spirit and he has physical representation. That's the Christian faith. So many things that are so spiritual, but they have physical representation that have mighty impact in the spirit. One of the things is being in church. Shall we open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12? Why should you be in church? If you believe God, if you have faith in God through Christ Jesus, or you want to put your faith in Christ Jesus, why should you be in church? Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to be reading from verse 18. And I trust the Lord that he will quicken his word in our hearts again this morning and always. The scripture says, For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched, and that born with fire, and to blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, so that those who had it beg that the word should not be spoken to them anymore, for they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, 
to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Hebel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape, who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the heart. But now he has promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not only the heart, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken, as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reference and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. The scripture says when we come to church, if it's a living church, a church that God has called a man, that he placed a call, he placed an anointing. He calls a man to pastor a church and he calls different men, uh, different men and women to member the church. The Bible says when we come to church, we have come to the mountain of the Lord. We have come to God, the judge of all. We have come to the blood of Jesus. We have come to Jesus Christ, the mediator of the new covenant, the going between, before, between God and man. We have come to the innumerable companies of angels. So as we are in this church this morning, we are not feeling anything, but angels are here. God himself is here. Jesus Christ is here. The blood of Jesus is here. The spirits of the just men made perfect. Christians who have given their heart to Jesus and they are waving us, they are waving encouragement Unto us to say, just keep on. The other side in heaven is so beautiful. You cannot imagine the world, the reward that is waiting for you. So when we come to church, what have we come to do? It's uh, I want us to be reminded that you cannot be a Christian and be a Christian all by yourself in your private corner. There is no other version of Christianity. If you go through the Bible, no matter what it is, we have found examples from the word of God of people who saw Jesus Christ in the flesh. They didn't ask for, they had an understanding. If you, if you listen to Apostle Peter, they had an understanding that Jesus actually is God. But their mind also could not contain it. That Jehovah, Yahweh, that the children of Israel, they, they, they are so much in, they so much have reference for God that they cannot even mention his name. The Jews and Christians, we serve the same God. As long as it is Judaism they are practicing, that it is not the rabbinic Judaism that they, that they practice, that people have brought so many things. We see our God, the God of the Old Testament in the Bible, is still the same God of the New Testament. You will see God speaking to the children of Israel so much with physical things in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, he has actually, it's like you have start, he started from the basic level. And he took it higher, higher, higher until everything becomes so spiritual. And that's why the Bible says, God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God has ever been a spirit, right from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. He is still a spirit. 
He only introduced himself so that we will have what to relate with. He introduced himself in physical things, physical sacrifices, physical tabernacle, physical tent, you know, to the children of Israel. And I feel that's why the children of Israel, they have a special place in the heart of God. They are to endure the almighty consuming fire, you know, coming with voice, that coming with strong word that Moses, the servant of God himself said, the voice on Mount Sinai was so, so strong. The sight was so terrible. The whole place covered in smoke, covered in darkness. You know, God couldn't reveal himself. He couldn't reveal himself physically to human flesh. We will just be consumed. Sin has corrupted the human body. Sin has corrupted our world. So if God were, you know, should just like break forth like that to us, everybody would just like, we would just disintegrate. But he chose to shield us. And because he has chosen to shield us and he has taken human race from one level by the hand, from one level to the other, until he has, he has built it up that now, as we put our faith in him, our spirit can see him. Our spirit can feel him. Our spirit can respond to him. And let's go to Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. We will see the session, the church, the apostles, human beings like us, who saw the Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. What did they do during their own time? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, from verse 1. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called, Na, is it Niger or Niger now? Niger, thank you. Lucius of Cyrene, Manahen, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So we will see the example from the word of God. Christians, were, they gathered together in Jerusalem. When the gospel got to Antioch, they gathered together, they were holding worship services unto the Lord. So why do we have to be in church? Number one, we have come to worship God. We come to church to worship God. Worship is an expression or a feeling of reference and adoration to God. So the church, God has established the church for his children to come together to worship him. God is the divine deity that we worship as Christians. He is not afraid to take our worship. Jesus in the flesh, he took worship from men to show that he is actually, he is God. Angels, the angels of God don't take worship. It's only demon spirits, angels of the devil that may want to take your worship. But Jesus in the flesh, to show that he is God, he took worship. When people bow down, there are different expressions of worship. We may worship God with our words. We worship God with our, our, our songs. We worship God with our substance. We worship God with our physical strength. But one of the purposes of the church is for us to have a place, an atmosphere, where, where we can worship God. There can never be a, a, a flow. There can never be a release between you and a God that you do not worship. If God is your God, 
if something or somebody is your God, you have to worship. So the church is a place to worship God. Shall we go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 3? We are going to read so many scriptures. I have just come by the Holy Ghost to show us what the word of God says. Philipp, if you get there before me, please, you can help me read. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, the scripture says, For we who worship by the Spirit of God are the ones who truly circumcised. Are the ones who are truly, truly circumcised. We rely on what Jesus Christ has done for us. We rely on what Jesus Christ has done for us. We put no confidence in human efforts. We put no confidence in human efforts. Thank you, sir. We are the true circumcision. We are circumcised in our hearts as Christians. If you have given your heart to the Lord Jesus... If you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are circumcised by God. The scripture says we worship God in the spirits and we do not have any confidence in human efforts. We are not acceptable to God because of what we do. We are acceptable to God because of what Jesus Christ do. But our part is in putting our faith in what Jesus Christ did for us. Accepting it. Acknowledging it. Appreciating God for it. And the scripture makes us understand Revelation chapter 4. The Bible says we were created. So if you feel why should I even worship God? If you are a human being and you have the breath of life, your purpose of creation is to worship God. Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 tells us, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So you are existing as a human being, because of the will of God, we were created to worship him. If you've got the time, you can read the whole of Revelation. You will see a, the pictorial form of the throne of God. God seated on the throne, surrounded by the 24 elder stone, with the four living creatures that worship God day and night. You know, we worship God also with our lives. We worship God. You have taken yourself from your bed this morning. You have gotten on the train or gotten into the car. We are here. It is a, it's a form of worship. It is an expression of worship to God to be in church. And the scripture tells us in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I want us to read that place. All the scriptures we are going to be reading were indicated to my spirit by the Lord. So we are going to read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. The scripture makes us to understand that the whole duty of man is to fear God, is to honor him. Whatever you may be doing, whatever your status, your, whatever your position, whatever your birthright, whatever your background, this is your own duty. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the scripture says, verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. This is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. No matter what invention you discovered, no matter whatever, you may be the professor of medicine, you might be the professor of electronics, you might, whoever, the whole duty of the, of the human being is to fear God, is to worship God, is to live for him. We are his expression. He has created us to express him on the heart. He created us. He gave us dominion. And Genesis chapter 1 tells us, 
when he formed Adam and Eve, the first man and the first woman on the earth, he gave them the dominion over, the, he made the heavens, he made the heart. He gave his heart to the human race. He has called us to dominate for him. He has called us to subdue for him. And our first responsibility is to worship him. Authority will never work in your life if you are not submitted to authority yourself. So for us as human beings, to be able to dominate well and have dominion on the heart, we must be submitted to the authority of God. If you consider Israel, the practice of the, of the Jewish religion, the practice of true scriptural Christianity brought stability to the world, brought credibility, brought peace in place of, 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 of chaos. It is when human beings began to seek many inventions. It's when human beings began to give themselves to the devil more and more that troubles and all of the chaos we have all around us came. But God is calling each one of us back to true worship. Worship of God from the earth. Acknowledgement, reference for God. Giving attention to his word, to his opinion, to his ways, to his principles. We are created. Worship denotes regard. So if we have come to church to worship God, it is for us to learn to worship God in the church and also to learn to worship him in our private and personal life. Worship connotes regards. Worship connotes respect. Worship connotes reference. Worship connotes honor. Worship connotes homage. So, if you believe in God, you have to be in church. Then what is another thing we've come to do in church? You have to be in church to learn about God. You have to be in church to learn about God. We go to school to learn so many things. We go to different trainings. But if you are going to learn about God, we have to be in church. Matthew eleven twenty-five 25 to 28, Jesus said, He said, come unto me, all ye that labor. At one time or the other, in one sector of your life or my life, we labor, we struggle. There are things that are too difficult for us to undo as individuals. And Jesus said, come unto me, all of you that you are laboring, that you are struggling. He said, and I will give you rest. If you are going to have true rest in life, we have to come to God. And it must be through Christ Jesus. God has established Jesus as the way, as the truth, as the life. No one can come to the true God of the Bible except through Christ Jesus. John 17 verse 3 tells us, this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. The only true God in heaven and on the heart is the God of the Bible. It is not an issue of exalting Christ, the Christian faith above every other faith, but that is just the truth. The truth of God is being revealed to us by the word of God, by the Holy Scripture, the Bible. And the Bible says it is through Christ Jesus alone that we can assess God. So we've come to learn about God. Jesus, while he was in the flesh, he said, learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and I am lowly in heart. Let's open our Bible to Acts of the Apostle, chapter 20, and we are going to see the word of God, verse 7. So we come to church to come and learn from God. Now, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. So we could see the example of Apostle Paul. On the first day of the week, like Sunday like this, this 
were gathering together of the children of God started on Sunday in the first century after Jesus Christ died and he rose again. So the Jesus was believed to have risen on the first day of the week. Disciples started gathering together. You know, in contrast to what the Jews were doing, what God commanded the Jews to do is to have a day of Sabbath, sabbatical rest on Saturday. That is the end of the week, right from the evening of Friday to the last to the evening of, of, of Saturday. But in the New Testament, by the examples of the apostles of the law. We have gathered together on Sunday like this to learn about God. The Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us as we hear his word. God brings his apostles, he brings his teachers, he brings his prophets, he brings his pastors, he brings his counselors, his encouragers in church. And God puts his word in their heart. He highlights a portion of the scriptures in their heart and it is publicly delivered as I am declaring the word of the Lord to us this morning. As we hear, we learn about God. We see the ways of God. We listen to the principles of God. You know, we reason in the scriptures. We, call, you know, we reason as the word of God. The Bible says line upon line. Precept upon precept. So the word of God comes to us. Shall we open our Bible to John chapter 5 verse 39? John chapter 5, we are going to read verse 39. The scriptures make us to understand. The, the Bible says, if you get there before me, you can read. John chapter 5 verse 39. I'm trying to look for my own verse here. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. When we listen to the word of God being preached, when you open your own Bible and you follow the readings of the word of God, you know, we learn the ways of God, we reason. Matthew chapter 22 verse uh, 29 also tells us something about the word of God. Matthew 22 verse 29. Matthew 22 verse 29. The scripture talks of the spirit and the power of God. Matthew 22 verse 29. Jesus answered and said to them, you are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. You know, we must know the scriptures as it is preached to us. Make us to learn the ways of God. Make us to learn the, 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 the doings of God. Make us to see the power of God in demonstration. In church, let's also read Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Why do you need to be in church? You need to be in church to learn the ways of God, to learn about God, the true God, so that you will not be mistaken, you will not be caught up in error. Nobody is going to deceive you. Read you when we come to church, the Bible is read, you can follow it. So, no one can say, and the scripture says, there is no private interpretation about the word of God. Only men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says, For the word of God is living and powerful. One translation says, It's alive, it's active. And sharper than any two X war, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joint and marrow, and is a designer of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. I'm going to read the next verse. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. The word of God in church exposes your heart, my heart, exposes our thoughts, exposes our desires, 
exposes our ways to us. You know, the word of God, as we come to learn of God in church, we will know, am I following God in truth or am I following my own way? Am I following the truth of the word of God or am I following ordinary tradition? And the Bible makes us understand traditions, if we just follow tradition, there will not be any spiritual impact in our life. As we come to church, as the word of God is proclaimed, the, there is a washing of the word. The word of God washes our spirit. It baths our spirit. It washes our mind of worries, of anxiety, of every infirmity, of every blemish. That is one of the benefits of being in church. Another thing why you need to be in church. We come to church to physically expose our spirits, soul, and body to God. To the atmosphere of heaven. Something happens in church that does not happen anywhere. Even if you are the general overseer of a church, even if you are the pastor of a church, when two, two or three, four, five, six, five, twenty people gather together in the name of the Lord, Zion is in session. Jesus said, I am there in their midst. We have read from Hebrews this morning. When we come to church like this in the name of the Lord under the auspice of a servant of God that is truly called a church that is established by God for God to the glory of God. God is there in our midst. And wherever God is, the scripture says there is war. There is liberty. So we come to church. You have to be in church to expose your spirit. The Bible says God is the father of all spirit. You need to expose your spirit to your father. Your father that created you, that made you, that, that knows you. For, to be refreshed, to be renewed, to be strengthened for another week. I think God has done it so good that you, we, we should come to church like this. Gather together, we can sit down before God, we can relax. We can listen to his word. As his word come, his, his word is followed by his power. He's followed by himself. There is, there, in, in my spirit one day, the Holy Ghost gave me a, a, a revelation in my heart. It's like God put the deposit of his spirit, he puts it in us. The Bible says, it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profit nothing. As we come to church, you might have been battered. Maybe you had a difficult week last week at work. You had to do this. Things were getting broken. You had a sore relationship with your spouse. Things weren't working. When we come to church, as we worship, me, sometimes, I don't know, as a person, I, I can't contain myself before the Lord. I just want to, just want to worship, just want to open up. And one of the benefits we have, one way that we're going to get the maximum benefit of being in church is when you get to church, open up to God. When you get to church, you are free to cry if you want to cry. You are free to roll on the floor if you want to roll on the floor. You are free. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a holy, a holy fellowship. That's one of the things we've come to do in church. We've come to fellowship with God. We come to church to fellowship with God. To fellowship with Jesus. To fellowship with the other brethren. The Bible makes us understand that, that in 1 John verse 1 to 3. It says, our fellowship is with the Father. The apostles who saw Jesus in the flesh. You know, they, 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 I, I was reading the explanation of this servant of God. Of blessed memory now. Charles Spurgeon. He said, when fellowship is the sweetest, your desire is the strongest. You know, we come to church to fellowship with God. As we fellowship with him, our, our desire of him becomes strong. We desire him more. Like a, 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 a husband and a wife. The more you are in constant communion, the more you are in constant conversation, the more you talk together, the more you understand each other more, the more you understand the likes, the dislike, what, you know, the triggers of this person, what puts him on his... You, you understand. 
exactly that's how god wants to relate with us i don't know if for one reason or the other you have stayed away from church maybe one week two three weeks me if i have to <laughs> stay away from church two three weeks it's going to be as if every christian has gone to heaven i'm the only person on the earth because there is that longing in our that, you know fellowship constant fellowship and communion create longing in our hearts for god and as human beings god has created eternity in our heart that it is only god that can satisfy the deepest longing of your heart is for God. No matter how rich you are in physical wealth, no matter how highly placed you are, the emptiness will still be there unless it is filled by the Lord Jesus Christ. So, shall we read Romans chapter 15 verse 4? We come to church to expose our spirit, soul, and body to God, to the atmosphere of heaven, to get refreshed, to get renewed, to get strengthened, to continue with our life. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. I am just taking us through what the word of God says. The Bible makes us to understand in Romans chapter 15, verse 4. It said, for what, oh, verse 3, verse 3 now. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproach you fell on me. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have Oh. So when we come to church and we hear the scriptures, we hear the word of God, hope is born anew in our heart. Hope is a substrate for faith. You can never develop progressive faith if you don't have hope in God. And the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 28, I love that place so much. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 12. You need to be in church to get a renewal for your spirit, for your soul, for your body. You know, there are a lot of things that bash us on hearts. But when we come to church, we receive refreshing from the law. To whom he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. That's where I want to start. When we come to church, there is a rest that God imparts into your spirit, into your soul, into your body. You are strengthened. You are quickened. You know, if you read Luke chapter 24, Luke 24 verse, two, verse 44. We can read that place. I want us to read that place. Luke 24 verse 44. If you get there before me, you can read Luke 24 verse 44. The scriptures make us to understand verse 44. Then he said to them, thank you, Ma, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Scriptures that you have read all by yourself that doesn't make any meaning. When we come to church, the Holy Ghost quickens it. The Holy Ghost opens our understanding and we get refreshed by death. When we come to church, when we worship, when we sing praise, the joy of the Lord is quickened in our spirits and it becomes strength unto us. Nehemiah 4 8 tells us that the joy of the Lord is our, is our strength. So we said we come to church to have fellowship friendly association with God, to have communion with God. And uh, as we do it, as we pay close attention, sweet fellowship, make us to pay clo close attention to God, to his ways, to his, to his principles, to his commandments. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. 
if you want to sustain your interest and your motivation in the Lord, you have to be in church. Spiritual things are very slippery. You have to constantly be in the church. You know, the scripture tells us, do not neglect the fellowshipping together with brethren as the manner of some is. Do not belong to the group of people who, who does not regard the gathering together of the children of God. You know, we have our choices to make. You can choose to walk on a Sunday if you've got a choice. Except you are doing a job that maybe by rota, you have to be in church. But many, many people, it's a test of your love for God. It's a test of your appreciation and of your honor. Sunday is a day of the Lord for us Christians. It's a day to fellowship with God. So if you've got the option, would you work on Sunday for more money? Or you are, you are not going to work. What is going to be your option? And your choice determines how valuable God is to you. So for our interest and our motivation in God to be sustained, we have to be church. Be it on Sunday, be it during the week. Then for you to keep your faith alive in God, for your faith in God to be kept alive, to be kept active, strong, and working, you have to be in church. There is no one for all faiths. The Bible says faith comes. It's a what? A progressive, continuous, continual coming of faith by the hearing and by hearing of the word of God. So we come to church to be able to keep our faith in God. You know, one of the things, I, I think one of the things that they did for people in iron cutting countries is they brainwash people. They will tell them for hours. I read that they will tell them for hours, Jesus is not Lord. Jesus is not Lord. They, they, when they were getting Christian, I think places like in, in the former Soviet Union, they will get Christians and they will be brainwashing them. Jesus is not Lord. Jesus is not Lord. Jesus is not Lord. They want them to believe it. And for us, so, and they have understood the principle that faith comes by hearing. And that's why you have to watch what you listen to. You must watch the song you listen to. If you listen to songs, uh, always that, I have flown away, I have died. One day, one spirit will die, one soul will die, your mental capacities will die, your physical capacities will die. Unlike if you listen to this to song that say Jesus is Lord Jesus, your spirit get convinced. Like the pastor said one day, one of the greatest investments you can make to your life in this country is to have very good headset or earbud, so that you keep your ear plug, you keep your mind on the word of God. If I want to ask us, we've been praying, we've been fasting. The New Testament has been put in portion for us to read. How many of us have sat down to read all of the passages every day? You have not missed any. I'm not asking us physically. We've had to go to work. But, and God knows. But do you know that we can choose, if we have chosen to listen to that scripture over and over again, he sticks. Even unconsciously, he sticks. So, if your faith will be kept alive in God, if your faith will be kept in, in an active form, faith in God, and the second part of active faith, the faith, the engaging of your faith to receive from God, we have to continuously be in church. Then, you have to be in church to witness and experience Personal witness, personal experience of the demonstration of the spirit and the power of God. We have learned from the Bible the gift of the spirits. 
As good as schools are, prophecies do not come in school. Word of knowledge, word of revelation. A teacher cannot be, you, you, you can't be in a class and your teacher that has come to teach you biotechnology come to church to say, thus saith the law. It will never happen. Unless the Holy Ghost in certain situation, the Holy Ghost just come. But in church, we have come, we have opened up our hearts. We have expressed our, our, our words to God to say, Father, we are here. We love you. Thank you. We appreciate you. It is easy for God to minister to us through word of prophecy. It is easy for God to show a brother, to show him a vision. To that, tell that sister when she's going back home today, not to take the circular line, but to wait for the train that goes to Amasmith. Because God knew what is going to happen. As we worship, you know, it is possible for God to bring a word to say maybe something you, you, been, you have a decision to make. Should I go to or should I go to Leicester or should I go to, to Scotland? You, you, you have prayed, you have fasted, you have prayed, but you don't seem to get an answer. It is possible in church for the Holy Ghost to just tell a brother or the pastor to say, somebody is here. The Lord said, peace be unto you. Scotland is your chosen. Even the pastor, we not know the person sometimes. Just, the Lord can just bring a word to say, and you feel maybe the devil has convinced you during the week that you, you are, God does not love you. And somebody just raised a church in God. Father me, forever you will father me. I love the way you father me. Thank you for loving me so much. And the Holy Ghost brood on that word. And he comes to your heart, hits you, bam. And you know who? That is God speaking to me. That is the wonders of God. That is the wonder and the awesomeness, the blessedness we enjoy as Christians. Heartfelt Christianity. Committed faith from our heart. Not the lip one. Not people paying lip service to God. If you want a personal and experiential knowledge of God, you have to be in church. In church, the power of God manifests. In church, the Holy Ghost manifests. In church, God brings heaven upon the hearts. And another thing, why you need to be in church is to be able to use your gift to bless the Lord and other Christian brethren. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I want us, we read the other time, Acts chapter 13 from verse 1. The people were ministering to the law. How do we minister to the law? We minister to God in worship song, with worship, with song. We minister, when we, when we declare his goodness, when we declare his greatness with words of mouth, with songs in our mouth, that's how to minister to the Lord. When we express our thanksgiving to him, when we, we, we are fasting, you know, it's not as if every, every, do you know, it's not as if all of our needs is, we will have to tell God every day, every day. But we are fasting to show God that, Father, we just declare, we love you. Do you know you can even have a day of fasting? You are not asking God for anything. You are just fasting. You are not, you are, you are fasting to take your attention from food and redirect the attention to God. Mommy was speaking at the headquarters this morning and she said, one of the reasons why we fast is to take our attention from food, from our mundane things, and we concentrate on the Lord. So we come to church. He, he has endowed each one of us with different gifts. Some people can teach. Some people can sing. Some people can play. Their own music is in their hands. Some people can organize. So when we come to church, we minister to God with worship. First Corinthians chapter 12 tells us, God has set in the body 
in the church. Every member has the one. Some people, God sent them to redeem Christian church of God. Some people, God sent them to live in faith. Some of us, God sent us to free redemption chapel here. And you cannot, praise the Lord, like you could not tell your physical parents to say, me, how can I be bearing uh, Jesus' is Lord family? Mm, no, I don't want that name. I want to leave my family. As long as we could not, we can't do that to our spiritual family too. God has not given us the permission to choose the hope. You can choose to go to wherever you like, but he has placed each one of us in the body with different gifts. And God will want you to celebrate your gift and accept your gift. Celebrate it. If you can only pray, do you just pray. If you can teach, just teach. If you can sing, just do what? Just sing. If you can encourage, just encourage. If you can follow people up, you can show love. Just show it. That's one of the reasons why we come in to church. And do you know that but the opportunity of using our gift in church, you know, uh, develops capacity and capability in us that bring profitability, profitability in our physical lives. In church, you have been given the opportunity to teach. You know, now my, every one of us, we need verbal strength, verbal confidence. You must be able to use your voice. Some people, they, they, they didn't get that opportunity in their physical, you know, in their personality. It's as we come to church. And, oh, Sister Lagbaja do this. Sister Lagbaja do this. In church, the, cap, the hidden latent power, latent graces, latent cap capacity that we have, they become discovered in church that eventually will be useful for us in our careers, in our jobs. So people have learned things in church that they go to set up business about. As long as you weren't called to the full-time five-fold ministry, you can make money from whatever thing you learn in church. So it's an opportunity to be in church. Another reason why you have to be in church, you have to be in church to learn how to live the Christian life. The Christian life is not natural. The Christian life is not natural to any one of us. You might have been given birth to with your, maybe with your, into a family where your father or your mother were practicing Christianity. Maybe true Christianity or Christianity by ordinary religion. Some people will say, I'm a Christian just for nominal Christian. And they have not even been in church for ages. The Christian life is not natural to any one of us. We have to learn how to live it. That's why the Bible says in 2 Peter 2.2, 2, it says, as a newborn babe, desire the sincere milk of the world that you may grow thereby. Desire the sincere milk of the world that you may grow thereby. So we come to church to learn how to live the Christian life. If you want to live your own Christian life by yourself in your corner, you will be weary, you will be discouraged, you will tire out. I want us to go to Psalm 73. We are going to read the whole of that Psalm so that we will know one of the greatest benefits that we have is to be in church, to, that we have is being in church to learn how to live the Christian life. Psalm 73. Truly, God is good to Israel. It's not good to Pastor Israel alone. Say it. God is good to me. Tell yourself, truly, put your name there. Truly, God is good to Lua Busai on me. God is good to you wherever you are. God is good to you. To such as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the boastful. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. Supposedly, they are not in trouble as other men. I put the supposedly. 
Nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than heart could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore, his people return here, and waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the most holy? Behold, these are the ungodly who are always at ease. They increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. And all day long I have been plagued and chasing every money. If I had said I would speak thus, Behold, I will have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Where we are going? Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to desolation as in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors as a dream when one awake. So, Lord, when you awake, you shall despise their image. Thus, my heart was grieved and I was versed in my mind. I was so foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For indeed, those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for a lottery. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. When we look at evildoers, people who do not fear God, and we see them achieving things, achieving feats, you know, this is a Christian talking. Someone who loves and fears the Lord. Say, ah, ah, God, why is it? You, you are just, but this is not fair. People who can cut corners, people who can lie, they are achieving things fast. They are accumulating physical wealth quick. He said, I was grieved. It was too painful for me. They even died, you know. He said, until I went into the sanctuary of God. And I understood. And you could see it. So when we come to church, we learn how to live the Christian life. If you want to sustain your Christian life, you have to be in church. You have to fellowship with like-minded Christians. Then in church, we have come to pray. We come to church to pray together. When you pray alone, you can have your answer. But when we pray together with one spirit and in one, uh, and in one heart, the answer, we draw the answer quickly. Jesus said, He two of you shall agree together as touching anything on the heart that you shall ask for my father. It shall be done of you of my father. So when we join our hands together, if you read the book of Acts of the Apostle chapter 4 verse 23 and down down to 31, the Bible says when John and, and uh, uh, jo, uh, Apostle Peter and Apostle John, when the religious leaders of their days, when they caught them and they straightly warned them not to preach in the name of the Lord, the Bible says they went to their home company so, the church of God is your own company as a Christian. If you want your own company, if you have professed faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, or if you are there this morning, you want to put your faith in Christ Jesus, please come to church. You, we have a lot of things to gain by coming to church. You know, the Bible says they went to their own company. 
And they raised their voice. They prayed. When they prayed, they had a, re a refill, a new refill of the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God with confidence. Do you want confidence as a Christian? You need to be in church. We need to pray together. We need to pray for the salvations of others together. We need to work for the salvations of others together. We need to preach together. We need to pull our soft, our resources together to propagate the gospel. Can you imagine if everybody in England is a Christian, genuinely born again, committed to God? Oh my God, life will be easier. Then we come to church to celebrate. We come to church to rejoice. We come to church to make merry. You know, you will see some brother, they know, so when we are doing praise worship, some people, they know how to make music, how to make melody with their hand. We clap, we sing, we rejoice. Psalm 132 tells us that. I want us to see that place. Psalm 132, the scripture says, Behold, ah, oh, that's Psalm 133. Okay, well, I'm just going to read it. Bible says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garment. It is like the dew of Hermon descending from the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing life forevermore. So there is the blessing. God has commanded the blessing in the gathering together of his people. Psalm 132 tells us, you, you know, I think, alright, you know, if, 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 you, if you read it down, down, it, and you, you will see, behold, that verse is, we heard of it in Ephrata, we found it in the, and, and verse, five, uh, verse 8 tells us, arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. The church in session is the resting place of the Lord. God is here. His angels are here. His strength is here. You know? The scripture says, let your priest be clothed with righteousness and let your saints shout for joy. Verse 11, the Lord has sworn to David, and on oh, no, and no. Verse 13, for the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here, I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless our provision. I will satisfy our poor with bread. I will also clothe our priest with salvation. And our saints shall shout aloud for joy. There, I will make the on and on and on and on. So we come to church to rejoice in the law, to express. You have, you want to do your, you want to celebrate your birthday, you can celebrate Thanksgiving in church. You have a new baby, you want to get married, we we'll celebrate together, we we'll worship, we we'll praise God, we we'll express our Thanksgiving. Then in church, we come to church to get physical healing. Physical healing. You will see Jesus perform so many healing miracles in the church. Mark chapter 3, you know, verse 6. <laughs> it was making the religious leaders of his days who had gone away from God. It was making them very upset. On the Sabbath. So, and in our contemporary world, they are, when you come to church, whatever the name of the ailment is, once you put your faith in God, you can be healed in church. Though you can choose to have treatment from NHS, but you can have a quicker miracle, a quicker healing, a stronger one, a lasting one in church. Healing for your spirit, healing for your soul, healing for your body. Then we come to church to get our physical needs met. We, oh, we just read it. God satisfy our poor with bread. You can come to church. You should come to church. You need something. Tell a brother, tell a sister in the church. Tell the pastor. 
You need dresses. You need food. You need where to live. You need to be signposted for one thing or the other. You have a problem with the law. Come to the church. God will guide us to, to, to supply your needs. Then, finally, we come to hear God in church. Christianity is the only faith that cannot survive without the voice of the shepherd. You cannot survive as a Christian without the voice of God. So when we come to church, we come to hear God. All of us know Psalm 23. And the, King David was one Old Testament character that really describe that display what it means to be in constant fellowship, communion, relationship, a fellowship with God. Said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. That's the voice of the Lord. Even in troubles, you know, he, he, he wrote the place in Psalm. He said, thou shalt increase my greatness. You will comfort me on every side. At another time, he said, Lord, we do not see our sign. Ha, show me a token for good. God said it. He said, I will lead you in the place, you know, where you, where you will take. I will guide you with my eyes. So we come to church to hear, if you want to hear God, come to church. God speaks in church. If you don't know any other thing about God, if you will just follow what you hear in church, you will find God. And let's see the blessing. Before we go to the blessing, impartation in church. If you are ever going to get the benefit of being in church, because it is possible to be physically present in church, but mentally, spiritually, you are not there. Don't let that be you. God wants us physically present in church, mentally present in church, spiritually present in church. Don't come to church because somebody is, is, is just dragging you. Don't come to church because of whatever. Just come to church because you love God. You have come to worship. You want to have all of this benefit that God has been speaking to us. Impartation is by participation. For you to get the benefit of being in church, you have to be an active participant of activities that go on in church. One major thing. Mommy said it this morning that God blesses for us as children of God is our obedience. God is not a God. You can't do plastic Christianity, artificial Christianity. God is not going to take it. We just read from Hebrew chapter 4 verse 13. All things are open. before They are open and naked before the eyes of God whom we have to do. So you cannot afford to pretend. You cannot afford to be hypocritical. It is not going to be acceptable. Like in the Old Testament, they offer physical sacrifices. They offered physical gifts. We also give physical gifts now in form of our offering money, whatever gift, resources. But mostly, it, is from, it must be from our hearts. God wants a heart commitment. A heart commitment translating to mouth commitment, translating to lifestyle commitment from us. So let's see the overall blessing of being in church. Being an active member of the church. Don't just be a member of the church by name. Don't be a member of the church by physical presence. Be a member of the church physically. Be a member of the church by participation. Be a member of the church from your heart. Honoring God. Let's see Psalm 84. Psalm 84. Sorry, I like to read a lot from the scriptures. Psalm 84. We are going to read from this one. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My lo soul longs, yes, even faint, for the courts of the law. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the solo a nest for herself. 
where she may lay her young. Even your heart has, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Sila, stop and think about it. Preachings, messages in church will make you to reflect, will make you to think. And we plan our lines of action. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. You can see where we get our strength. As we appear in Zion, we go from strength to strength. As we pass through life, we make it valley of back, a valley of blessing. We get into blessing. People come in contact with you. If you abide in church, they get blessed. Oh, Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ye, O God of Jacob, O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your court is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tent of wickedness. For the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Let's rise up on our feet. I'm closing Psalm 92. The scripture says in verse 13, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteous in aim. These are the benefit, the blessing of abiding before God. Can you just close your eyes and respond to God? The psalmist says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Make your commitment to the Lord. Appreciate him for the opportunity to be a Christian, to be in a living church, to be in a true church. I want us to really bless the Lord this morning. It's an opportunity to be here. Yes, some people have been deceived. The devil has hijacked the lives of some people is, is, is he has gotten them into a fake and false or false church. Let's pray. I want us to lift up our hand and pray, Lord. We stand as your representative. Everyone the devil has lured into wrong church, into fake church, into false church. We command deliverance of them. There are holy seekers, there are true, sincere seekers that the devil has misled them, you know, to fake church to false church. Everyone in England everyone in the United Kingdom, everyone all over the world that Satan has misled into fake or false church. We command their deliverance this morning. We command their deliverance. We command the shackles of the devil to be broken from all their neck. We command the veil of darkness to be removed from their heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's pray. Mighty Holy Ghost, please lead them to write the, to the right church. Lead them to right churches. Lead them to right denominations. Lead them to, we are not, we in full redemption chapel, we are not the only true church. Oh Lord, lead our home people to us here. Lead these people, your people, who you created for your glory, who you shed your blood for. Lead them to the right churches where you want them to be. Oh, let them find true salvation with, from, from you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Father, now as a person, speak to the law. God has reminded you, you know, about 14 or 15 benefits of being in church, congregating with other people of God. Just say, Father, I recommit myself to my physical attendance, active participation. That is your responsibility. Don't turn your responsibility to prayer. Receive strength, physical participation, active participation, sincere participation in church. I want to be a true member of the body of Christ, a true member of church that spirit, soul, and body physically, mentally, I will be here. I will
will receive the blessing. And if you be here, begin to claim the blessing. Because I am planted in the house of the Lord, I flourish. In the name of Jesus, I bring forth fruit in my old age. I flourish. Ah, in the mighty name of blessings all around me, I claim the blessing of the law. I appropriate the blessing of the law in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our God. Let's take this song. As the day panted after water, so my soul longs after you. worship give it to him this morning this afternoon I may Lord ask him Lord help me to to be fully engaged with you you are my life you are my glory in the name of Jesus I recommit my spirit soul and body my life to you in Jesus mighty name we have prayed Father, thank you for your word this day. Thank you for grace, for strength, for life, for unction, flowing with these words, imparting life, grace, strength, confidence, renewal, refreshing into our spirit, soul, and body. Thank you for lifting bodies. Thank you for breaking yokes. Thank you for quickening our heart, for encouraging us. Thank you, Lord. We receive every operations of the Holy Ghost in our heart, personally, in our families, in our church, as they all this morning, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we recommit our spirit, soul, and body unto you. You will sustain our desire for you. Amen. You will sustain our interest in you. Amen. You can never leave us. Help us never to stray from you. Hold us with your right hand forever. 
you will take each and every one of us into a deeper level of personal experiential knowledge of you. Communion, 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 fellowship with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Clap your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed this morning? Have you been blessed this morning? You know, one of the last things she said was she, when she was asking us to pray about people getting saved. And a thought that came to my spirit was that our urge to get people saved must be greater than our hodge to lord it over them. It must be more important for you, it must be more important to you that people get saved than that you drag them to church, your own personal church. Sometimes they will come to your church, sometimes they won't. Sometimes you will be, sometimes the salvation of some people is instant. You meet them, you speak to them, they get born again. For some people, they need to collide with God about five times before they finally surrender. So whichever pathway it is, if you, maybe you are number two on the list, maybe five people will eventually preach to that person before they give their life. You might be number two on the list and you might think you have failed because the person didn't commit that day. No, you didn't fail. You had it to what was there before. And the day will come that the cup will be full and that person will get saved. When God is rewarding all the people that contributed to the salvation of that person you will not miss your own portion in Jesus name one of the great things about teachings like this one of the great things about teachings like this is that it takes us back to basics we need to always remember why we come to church why you wake up by why you leave your house by 6 30 in the morning why you wake up very early sometimes where you, where you come from work you've worked overnight and normally people will go to bed and sleep the whole sunday morning yet you jump on the train and you are trying to find your way here knowing fully well that you are likely to still go back to work in the evening there is a reason why you do all those things and it is not in vain don't let the devil convince you that your sacrifices are not worth it the God that sees in secret will reward you openly. Let Satan never get you to that point where you think, nah, it's not worth it. I'm too tired. I'm too stressed. Lord, we help us in Jesus' name. Some of us laughed when she said Simon and she was asking if it was Niger or Niger or something like that. You know, in 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 some of the ancient translations is actually written Simon the Black. And you will find black men in, he was actually an African Gentile. So don't be afraid to call him a black man. He was a black man. Simon of Cyrene was also a black man. So you would see specific people in, in, in specific places like that. Um... Like we said yesterday, we are trusting God to deliver tracts to about 10,000 houses this Easter. So, while in some cases we might not be able to go and knock on their door, we happen to know people that can. <laughs> and we intend to use those people that can. You know, those high-rise buildings, you can't get in if nobody opens for you. But there are people that don't need anybody to open for them. We'll try to, to employ those. Also, pray along with us. Pray that that each tract would be like the hack of the covenant in the house of, both in the house of Dagon and also in the house of, uh, what's the name of that man? Of Bedidom. You will do both. So that every day gone in their houses will fall because the heart came, and also that it will bless their souls and their spirit like Obedido in Jesus' name. Finally, there's somebody in this place that 
you've been trusting God for something, but then Satan seems to have come at you because of something maybe you have done before. You've repented of it. You've forgotten about it. But now Satan has brought that thing as the reason why you are not getting what you want. It is a lie. Do you understand me? It is, I'm saying it openly so that everybody would understand. It is a lie. You've repented about it. It is gone. It is done. It is finished. God does not remember. And like somebody said, what Satan does is to take a picture of certain things that we've done before. He might have a picture on his phone, but he cannot prove it. Because that thing does not exist anymore. It is under the sea the Lord has forgotten about it. So whatever you are believing God for, don't let Satan use something that doesn't exist to threaten you or to dissolve your faith. You will have what you're asking God for. You will have what you're asking God for. Let's lift up your two hands to Jesus and worship him. Lift up uh, God's vessel that he has used for us this morning. So let God know that you appreciate him. Let God know that you appreciate him. Lord, we thank you. We know we do not come to your presence in vain. Yes, there are so many things that we are called to do by ourselves. But the place of fellowship cannot be minimized. The place of fellowship would always be important. The fact that you get up every Sunday and you see other people that have come to worship God like you. That in itself is encouragement. Just say, Lord, we love you. Let it never be that the day will come that we will find a sacrifice too great to give you. Pray that prayer for yourself. That that day will not come. That there will be a sacrifice you will consider, okay, this is too much for God. That, there will, that you will never get to that place that you feel, okay, this is a bridge too great to cross for God. That there will be nothing you cannot give. There will be nothing you cannot hand over. There will be nothing. Whatever that you will not start counting personal costs at the expense of the assignment of the Lord for you. In the name of Jesus. Can we distribute the communion quickly, please? Escapante librando skive na hande librado shete perato skipayegis zete brando dosita. Thank you. Meti parus ke tambla hatos. Thank you. Mande perato skapati krahato skiba. That day will not come. That day will not come. That God will say, "Can you go for me?" And you say, "Lord, no." Hmm. One of the problems that Apostle Peter had was that God dropped a, a, a sheet from heaven, all manner of, of, of animals, said, uh, arise, kill, and eat. said, no, Lord. The God that said, arise, kill, and eat, did he not know he was the one that gave you the ordinances about clean and unclean animals in the first place? Lift up your voice to Jesus. Say, help me. Let there never be a bridge that, is, that will be too great for me to cross for you. In the name of Jesus, let there not come that day that there will be a sacrifice that will be too big. Whether it will be money, whether it will be house, whether it will be cars, whether it will be anything, whether it will be our time, whatever it may be, that Lord will help us to always be able to lay everything down at the foot of the cross. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we lift up our bread and wine to you this morning. As a family, we have come to partake of the meal that you instituted. As a people that you have helped and as a people that you have had mercy on. Father, as we share of this spiritual meal together, let our spiritual experiences be heightened. Let our understanding and revelation of what it means to fellowship with each one another and with you, let, it, let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Let us know. Let us understand. Let us see what happens when we come together before you. In the name of Jesus. And because the strength of the corporate would always be greater than the strength of the individual. 
we declare under this corporate atmosphere that every need is met. Everything we are believing you for is done. In the name of Jesus, whatever ailment or disease or sickness in anybody in any way, shape or form, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You can take your bread and your wine. Pastor Sam, please come. I'm going to anoint your hand and you just help me anoint everybody quickly. In the name of Jesus. You can just help me anoint every single body. Just pray in the Holy Spirit. Just pray in the Spirit. As he anoints your he- hands, as he anoints your hand, just put that hand on your head and declare over yourself. Zeli bradushki pakata libra hande boski panas. Ezote kaparito shita prahato skipele karu skipande libraheto skipanos. Ebrando velato skipalato brahando skipanda lebrahando skete keligrahato skipanos. Zete brado do shete blahato skete lage de bado de librahato skipatia na maskete blehetos. Zanta prahato skiprahato veleto zizaham brahato skipan. Mete barudo skete gadabara do do sete ke librado veleto ziamahandes. Escabante librando skepali rudo sketa gadebali to brahato skizaza. Mezo zilande librando skapabla hito sia brando shetebas. Zeta brando do zuze kete glahato se la ham brahato shetabalatos. Hombre to pale se teketi ya deti zezi prahato shita prahato si zaheli krahando skete. Mam brahato ski valato sita rado shata palato si akaba. In the name of Jesus, we are marked for a difference. 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 Our lives will be parables of righteousness. Our lives will be examples of your goodness. We are marked for a difference. We are marked for a difference. We will be godly references. We will be godly pointers. We will be godly references. We will be godly pointers. In the name of Jesus. Men will see us and desire the God we serve. In the name of Jesus. Upon our own lives, it will not be a story of, oh, it's always people that don't have enough or that that run after God. We would have enough. I will still run after you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you have your seat quickly? Pastor Busi, just stretch your hand to and just say the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. It's a it's a can you have your seat quickly? We're about to go home now. Um we 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 God helping us we would have a bunch of teachings like like this because one of the things the devil is doing these days is 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 eroding the need or the desire for foundational teachings of the word of God and this is what i mean how many of you um understand the fact that the the most popular sermons these days involve things like realms and dimensions and all those things are good but there is a foundation upon which they must rest there is the foundation of faith there's the foundation of baptism when one of the ways you know is you ask people and say if if you if you don't get water baptized if a person doesn't get water baptized and the person dies, would the person go to heaven? Yes, no? You, 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 you see where I'm going? Because if we do not have those foundations set in stone, it's like someone trying to build a six-bedroom house and your foundation is not made of stone, you will have a problem. So we are going to have some... God help us some teachings that would go back and revisit the foundation. So when somebody comes here one day and says, today I'm going to speak to you about what is salvation. Don't think 
what is this one talking about? We are asking you to talk, talk, talk to us about, uh, give us rev, and you are talking us what is salvation. <laughs> My friend, Satan will give you rev, and you will know the difference. Lord, help us in Jesus' name. If you have your offering, just raise it up to the Lord. If you are paying electronically, just raise up your right hand. Father, I bless the offerings of your people. I bless their tithe. I ask that you multiply both material and spiritual blessings unto them. In the name of Jesus, let it never be that you are stranded. Let it never be that you don't find help. But strangers will help you. And people you don't know will pay your bills. In Jesus' name we pray. Daddy said I should. He was telling he told me to specifically specifically tell you that he loves you and he appreciates every one of you. And that he he, he misses you. So he's probably listening right now anyway. So Daddy, if you are listening, they said they are looking forward to seeing you. Me too, I don't mind though. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm ready to go home. Let's rise up on your feet as we go home today. Just take one minute to just appreciate the Lord. Just say, Lord, we appreciate you. It's always a pleasure to gather together with brethren. It's always a pleasure to come to his house. God's house is not boring. God's house is life. God's life is hope. God's life is strength. God's house is encouragement. God's house is fellowship. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, we give you praise. Thank you, Father. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for today's service. Thank you because you are here and you are always here. Thank you for reminding us again why we come together as brethren. Thank you for reminding us again why we have need of communion with you and with others. Father, I ask that you expand these words in our heart. Help us never to forget that it's not a waste of time to come before you physically. Yes, we have online platforms. But it is, uh, there is always something that happens when we see each other. We can look upon each other's face and say it is well. Father, this week I declare that it is well. Everyone online and on ground, we declare that it is well with your soul. In the name of Jesus. Testimonies of abundance. Testimonies of safety. Testimonies of provision. Testimonies of your goodness and your majesty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, our what's that? Our passage again. Our watchword. Apologies. Some of us are Zechariah chapter four, verse six to seven it says, "This is the word of the Lord to us, Israel. Put your name if you if you or put my name if you don't want. This is the word of the Lord to Israel, for redemption chapel worldwide. Not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit," says the Lord of us. Who art thou great mountain before Israel, before this church, before this ministry? You shall become a plain, and you shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace and grace to it. Grace unto you in Jesus' name. Lord bless you. See you next week, Sunday. We are still fasting. No? It's 40 days, not 14. Just thought to remind you. Pregnant people don't fast though. If you call me because you are fasting, I might I may or may not answer your phone. Hallelujah. Bless you.